Leading the Way with Dr. Michael Youssef is a paid program sponsored by viewers like you. Blessed Resurrection Day from the Holy Land, from the place where the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The tomb is empty. Every time I come here, I go by, I know the tomb is empty. He rose and soon is going to come back to take us to heaven with him. This Easter, experience the power of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. In his sermon, Jesus Rose from the Dead, So What?, Dr. Youssef lays out the undeniable evidence that Christ is risen indeed and how the empty tomb sets Christianity apart from the world's religions. Only Christ's empty tomb can give you purpose for life and for all of eternity. Without the empty tomb, Christianity would just be another dead religion. And make no mistake about it, all the founders of the other religions, they're all dead, 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 dead. But Jesus Christ rose from the dead. This timely message is available on DVD for your gift of any amount. Explore Dr. Youssef's teachings yourself or share it with friends and family. Contact us and request your copy today. Call, write, or visit us online at ltw.org. Right here from this land of the Bible, where our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, died and was buried, then He rose again on the third day, right over my shoulder, that Golgotha. Yesterday I was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and I cannot help but weep on the inside when I teach in that place. And I don't weep over Jesus, I weep over me because it's my sins that made him sweat blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, saying, Father, if some other way that you can accomplish your will, other than that moment of separation between me and you, which it took place when Jesus hung on that cross and carried your sin, my sin, right on him. And then in a little place, the, the skull, Golgotha, it was a mine where they were cutting stones. And you come in and you see it. They were cutting it this way, great good stones, and then they cut the other way. But right there in the middle, there is something the shape of a skull, Golgotha. This is the stone that was rejected by the builders. On that Golgotha, Jesus the Christ hung on that cross for you and for me. But then, thank God, he was taken and a few yards away, he was buried. And, the, and that burial site in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, I always say, praise God, the tomb is empty. For he rose again on the third day in the power of his omnipotence. And then he ascended to heaven. He's coming back, and he's going to take us with him to reign and rule forever. God bless. Remember the resurrected Jesus. I was reflecting on that cry of victory that the Apostle Paul writes to his beloved disciple Timothy. And I thought back, my mind hearkened to the uh, September 11, 2001, when the World Trade Center was attacked. And immediately after that, so many brave, patriotic men and women who went and signed up to go to Afghanistan to fight Al-Qaeda, who were responsible for that atrocity. Among those were very successful professionals who put their careers on hold to serve their country. Some even paid the ultimate sacrifice, their lives. The battle cry for those brave men and women was this, remember September 11. Remember September 11. 
But today, on this Resurrection Sunday morning, I want to tell you about another battle cry that you and I must always remember, not once a year, not every day, but every moment of every day. Indeed, it's the cry that we should be remembering in every event in our life. Remember the resurrected Jesus. Uh, this is the battle cry of remembrance that was used to recall not a dreadful feeling of humiliation and defeat, but rather it recalls victory, power, strength, and glory. This is the battle cry that will give you strength when you have none. It is the battle cry that will give you victory when you feel defeated. It is the battle cry that will give you comfort in the middle of sorrowful circumstances. It will heal your painful memories. It will fill you with hope and promise for the future. It will lift you up when you have fallen. Remember the resurrected Jesus. Say it with me. Remember. This cry of remembrance was given to a young, straggling pastor who was facing so many challenges and so many difficulties nearly 2,000 years ago. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, the apostle, the great apostle, pauses to encourage his young, discouraged disciple. Remember the resurrected Jesus. He was reminding Timothy and every one of us um, not of defeat, but of victory. Uh, he was telling Timothy and every one of us to remember the greatest victory and the greatest event in all of human history. Uh, this dying great apostle Paul was saying to this young protege and to every one of us in this place and watching live on television, people who have placed their faith in Christ alone, remember the resurrected Jesus. I'm sure if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and committed your life to Him and He's your Savior and Lord, I'm sure you're asking the question, Michael, how can anyone forget the resurrection? How can anyone forget the resurrection of Jesus? The resurrection of Jesus is what sets the Christian faith apart from all the other so-called great religions. The resurrection of Jesus is the very heart and soul of my Christian faith. How can I forget the resurrected Jesus? Without the resurrection, the Christian faith would have been the greatest hoax as ever perpetrated on humanity, ever. Without the resurrection of Jesus, uh, He would have been just a founder of another dead religion. Jesus would have been a mere good teacher uh, or a good prophet or a good philosopher, or a guru who died for a good cause. Without the resurrection of Jesus, we would never have had Western civilization and modern civilization. Without the resurrection of Jesus, we would have still be living in the Stone Age, in the Dark Ages. Beloved, listen, our memory is fickle. And Paul knew how easy it is to forget this most important event of all human history. He understood just how easy it is for us to get so bogged down in life's crushing problems and crushing circumstances and forget the all-important power of the resurrection that Paul said is working in the life of every believer, that power of the resurrection that is available for everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was only too aware of just how easy it is for us to become so bitter and so sour and so skeptical in life and we become so angry at God at times. The very power that raised Jesus from the dead, He has been telling us, is available to work in us. Listen carefully. Accept and remember and claim the power of the resurrected Jesus, and all of the other things in life will fall in place. Remember that the power will help you make sense of, out of confusion. And then you're going to find other issues that may be troubling you are going to fall in place. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, 
and you accept the glaring evidence of the resurrection, you submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, then you're going to find that issues such as miracles or, or the authority of the Scripture or the divinity of Christ and on and on and on, all of these are going to fall in place. But they begin with the resurrection. Get the resurrection right, and you will get everything else in Christianity right. I mean, just look today at the statistics that I read about the dependence on prescription drugs. When I read those statistics, I just want to weep. We all use prescription medicine, and, but I'm talking about dependence and addiction to mind-altering drugs. When I asked a person one time who's going through this and is unable to get off this, I said, why? He said, it helps me to cope with the problems of life. My beloved friends, please listen to me. There is no drug that can really help you make sense of life. There is no drug that can help you overcome the powerful life challenges that we all face. Hear me right. All of the self-help methods, they can help a little bit. All of the self-help, they may help you just a little bit. But they can never change the circumstances that are beyond your control. They can never give us supernatural power to overcome evil. They can never give us victory over addiction. They can never give us ability to rise above illnesses and diseases and sickness. Uh, above all, they can never give us victory over the greatest enemy of all, and that's death. Uh, but the power of the resurrected Jesus can. See, throughout the Scripture, we see it again and again and again, the transformative power of the resurrection of Jesus. The power of the resurrected Jesus came upon a frightened group of men. I mean, they were so frightened, they had all the doors locked, and they did not want to go out of the house. But when the power of the resurrection came upon them, the, the history says that they have turned the Roman Empire upside down. <laughs> the power of the resurrected Jesus came upon a terrorist who was arresting and killing Christian believers, and he was on a mission on his way to the city of Damascus, Syria, in order to arrest the Christians. And that power of the resurrected Jesus came upon him and made him the great apostle Paul. The power of the resurrected Jesus came upon a man who denied his friend Jesus three times and gave him the courage to ask that he be crucified upside down. Uh, today, from uh, the media ministry that we have and, and, and from Kingdom Sat and from leading the way around the world, we literally receive thousands of correspondence from people and from countries worldwide, far and wide, evidence of the resurrection power transforming their lives. Some were terrorists, and now they're evangelists. And tell me that this is not the power of the resurrected Jesus. The resurrection power turned renegades into righteous men and women. The resurrection power turned deceitful people into truth speakers. The resurrection power came upon a high school boy in the 60s. And today, as you know, we broadcast 13,000 times a week in 195 countries, and God gets all of the glory for that. Amen. The power of the resurrected Jesus accomplishes what no earthly power could ever accomplish. My beloved friends, on this Resurrection Sunday, if you have never experienced that power of the resurrection, today you can. This is the good news. You can today walk out of here a transformed man or woman, boy or girl. If you have never come to the resurrected Jesus, humbly confessing your sins and repenting of your sins, acknowledging your shortcomings and your inability to save yourself, and you receive forgiveness from His hand and receive the gift of eternal life, that power of the resurrection begins to work in you. The resurrection power will come upon you and will descend upon you, but then you have to constantly remind yourself of that power that raised Jesus from the dead is working in you. He can give you power today, regardless of how powerless you may feel. This is power the world does not understand. 
This is a power that all of humanity will never understand. Remember the resurrected Jesus. Say it with me. Remember. For thousands of years before Jesus came from heaven to earth, all of God's prophets in the Old Testament, they prophesied of His coming. Jesus is none other than the Creator God who became man. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, the Bible says that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, according to the Old Testament. The Old Testament said He's going to come, and He's going to die for our sin. And then He was buried and raised again on the third day, just as the Scripture predicted hundreds of years before Christ came. He did not just appear in a vacuum. He wasn't looking for a mission. He knew what His mission was. He coexisted with the Father before all worlds. And yet, He humbled Himself, and He saw that equality with the Father is not something to grab into, but He let it go. And in obedience, He came so that He might carry your sins, your sins, your sins, and your sins, and mine on this holy, sinless body. In Acts chapter 2, 29 and 30, 31, Peter said, King David prophesied about Jesus and the fact that he will not stay in the grave for very long, 1,000 years before the resurrection. In Psalm 16, you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. His body cannot see decay, cannot decay like ours. He rose from the dead. Remember the resurrected Jesus. We live in a, a day of fast perishing news cycles. Uh, there are men who founded religions that are built on killing of your enemies, but our God, say that with me, but our God who came from heaven says that you must love your enemies to death. That's our death. Our God did not tell us to kill our enemies, but rather He told us to love them. Our God did not uh, kill His enemies, but He was killed in our place so that we may live with Him for all of eternity. Amen. Amen. Christianity is not a fad or a flash in the pan. No, the Christian faith is not made of rules and regulations but of resurrected Lord. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not man's invention, as some would want us to believe, but it is God's eternal plan. The Christian faith is one with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. The Christian faith is one with King David. The Christian faith is one with Peter and James and John and all the apostles. The Christian faith is one with the early Christian fathers. The Christian faith is one with all of the Reformers. And we remember all of that when we remember the resurrected Jesus. He said, remember the resurrected Jesus. That's His divinity. Descendant of David as His humanity. Finally, Paul tells Timothy to remember the resurrected Jesus because remembering the resurrection will give you true and lasting contentment. Oh, my goodness, how many people are searching for contentment today? Ah, but when you are constantly connected with the resurrected Jesus, when you are constantly remembering the resurrected Jesus, you have true, permanent contentment. Life goes up and down, you're contented. Problems come and go, you're contented. Difficulties you face, you're contented. Because you know that Jesus has gone ahead of us to heaven, and that Jesus is preparing a place for us in heaven. And because Jesus will one day, and maybe sooner than we think, is going to come back and take every one of us to heaven. Amen. Amen. When you begin and continue to remember the resurrected Jesus, you'll discover that life, with all of its ups and downs, 
is one big, giant, hope-filled adventure. I don't know where you have placed your hope. Only you know where your total hope is placed. And it's between you and God. I know where my hope is. It's not in this wonderful ministry. I love it with all my heart. It's not in the 35 books that I've written. It is not in the ministries that goes all over the world. It's none of that. And I love my family just as much as you love your family. But my hope is not in my family. My hope is set on the resurrected Jesus soon to come back and take me to heaven. Make no mistake about it, Jesus was the only one who rose from the dead never to die again. Never, never to die again. You see, he raised Lazarus from the dead. He raised a lot of people from the dead. Every one of the people that Jesus raised from the dead, they all died again, but not Jesus. He rose never, never, never to die again. And he is in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, sitting on the rim of the universe. He's ruling and reigning. And every time you see the world out of control, remember, it is not out of his control. There's something else I want to tell you. It's of vital importance because it's going to authenticate this exhortation by the great apostle to his young protege. When he said this battle cry to Timothy, remember the resurrected Jesus. Beloved, listen to me. Paul did not find himself sitting on the French Riviera sipping some tulip juice. No. No, 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 no. He was in a Roman dungeon. As many times as my wife and I have been in Rome, we have never been able to find the place, but we found it last year. I cannot describe it to you. You go inside, all the way down, four walls, only a hole in the ceiling from which they dropped the food. He was in that dungeon when he wrote to Timothy and said, remember, the resurrected Jesus. You see, if Paul was in the lap of luxury and he would write to Timothy and said, remember the resurrected Jesus, you would say, what does he know? What does he know? Oh, yeah, he does. He does. He knew that his earthly life was about to come to an end. In fact, most historians say that this is the very last epistle that he wrote. It's the very last one, 2 Timothy. He knows his time is short. Does he complain? No. Does he exhibit bitterness and a disappointment at his situation of feeling sorry for himself? No. Does he regret his commitment to Christ and faithfully serving Christ and faithfully suffering for Christ? No, no, he rejoice, for he goes on to say, if I die, I'll be with him. If I live, I'll serve him. Beloved, Paul lived and died a contented man, a contented man. What made the difference? What made the difference? And he can make the difference in your life today. He can make the difference in your life today. Hello, friends. So many people don't understand how can the shedding of the blood of the Son of God. There are some pastors who are now calling the crucifixion a child abuse. But let me explain to you. This is God's way, not their way or my way. It's God's way. From the very beginning, in the Garden of Eden, what did God do in the light of Adam and Eve's rebellion? and going against what God told them to do. He redeemed them. How? By slaying an innocent animal, shedding the blood. And then later on, he taught his people Israel. Uh, as soon as they came out of Egypt, 
to offer that sacrifice, to remind them that sin is costly. And then they have to do it year after year, shedding of blood of an animal, blood of an animal, year after year after year. And then God said, I am going to send my son to shed his own blood once and for all. And so that whomsoever would come to him, believing in him, receiving him as their only Savior and Lord, that blood immediately cleanses them from all sin and give you that assurance that the moment you close your eyes in death, you will be with Jesus. There is no other way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, you can reject it all you want. Unfortunately, you're the loser. So why don't you come to him today? Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I accept your death on the cross to be for me. Thank you for paying the price of my sins. And the moment you say that, believing it with all your heart, your sins are forgiven eternally. Not just for a day or two, but forever. Will you do that today? This Easter, experience the power of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Believing the fact of the bodily resurrection and trusting the resurrected Christ can determine your eternal future. And since there are only two places where you can spend eternity, think very carefully and very thoughtfully. In his sermon, Jesus Rose from the Dead, So What?, Dr. Youssef lays out the undeniable evidence that Christ is risen indeed and how the empty tomb sets Christianity apart from the world's religions. Only Christ's empty tomb can give you purpose for life and for all of eternity. Without the empty tomb, Christianity would just be another dead religion. And make no mistake about it, all the founders of the other religions, they're all dead, 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 dead. But Jesus Christ rose from the dead. This timely message is available on DVD for your gift of any amount. Explore Dr. Youssef's teachings yourself or share it with friends and family. Understand why there is no more important fact of history than the resurrection of Jesus Christ, how it changes everything, and why your future depends on it. Contact us and request your copy today. Call, write, or visit us online at ltw.org. Passionately proclaiming uncompromising truth, leading the way with Dr. Michael Youssef, thanks you for your faithful support through your continued prayers and gifts. at the Church of the Apostles in Atlanta, Georgia. Every Sunday, I meet people from all over the United States, from Maine to California, and they love the experience. They said, for years, we've been wanting to come and visit. And so, if you're ever in Atlanta, Georgia, I would love for you to come and visit, shake my hand, and I wanna thank you in advance for making that to be a priority in your life, visiting apostles. God bless.